Welcome to the module 2 of our Spring Boot course. So in this module, we are going to talk about the Spring Boot starter parents. Uh, if you remember on the initial uh, modules, we talked about how the dependency management is being done by the Spring Boot. Uh, Spring is going to take care of all the dependencies for you. So in this uh, lesson or in this video, we are going to get a deeper look into it how the spring boot is doing all these things for us and when are we are saying about the starter parent what it is okay so let's quickly see what we are going to cover in this uh, lesson we are going to talk about a little bit about the dependency management uh, i'm not going to talk about the dependency management as a complete module uh, i'm just going to talk about the dependency management within the spring boot and how spring boot is doing that for us I'm going to talk a little bit about the Spring Boot starter parent. Um, uh, how we can inherit the starter uh, parent in our Spring Boot application. Why it is really important. We are talking about the uh, dependency management. We are talking about the Spring Boot starter parent. So we just need to understand why it is so critical when we are talking about the Spring Boot application. And on the last part of it, we are going to talk a little bit about the the benefits or the advantages we are going to get out of this uh, starter parent okay so let's start with the dependency management and how this is related to a spring boot application so what kind of a things or what kind of a benefits or the advantages being provided by the spring boot uh, for us so the one of the major benefit is that with each release of the Spring Boot, it provides us a curated list of the dependency that it supports. So for example, uh, right now we are working on the Spring Boot 2.1.0 and now let's say down the line on maybe in the uh, down the line in a year, Spring Boot released the 3.1.0. So with the release of 3.1.0, Spring Boot is going to update that list of the dependencies saying, okay, now I am supporting Spring uh, Core 6.1.0 or 5.1.0 for all the Apache's uh, common dependencies. Uh, I am going to support all the versions starting from 4.1.0 uh, for all the JSONs or uh, all the XML kind of a dependence, all the third parties, right? It basically create a list and it say, okay, these are the supported version for us. So you don't have to. Uh, you don't have to keep that list with you. If you remember on, on the initial uh, lessons, I was talking about the same thing where you don't have to think about the dependencies. What is the right version? Uh, is it going to be the compatible? So Spring Boot is going to create that list for you with each version. Okay. So you do not need to provide a version of any of these dependencies in your build configuration. And when I'm saying a build configurations, if you are using a Maven, uh, which I'm going, I'm using in this uh, uh, lessons, on your pom.xml, you more or less, if you're using a Spring Boot starters, you're not defining the dependent, the version number. It is being automatically picked for you. You're not defining the other versions for your, for example, if you are creating a web uh, application, right? You need the Spring Web dependencies, but you never going to define. Okay, I need a Spring 5.1 or I need a Spring 4.0. Based upon your uh, parent version, it's automatically going to uh, pick you the right or the correct version. We will be going to get a deeper look into it. Okay. And the last part is, and the benefit in in short, right? So the biggest benefit for you is when you upgrade your Spring Boot application. For example, uh, I'm just taking example. I'm working right now. I'm working on Spring Boot 1.5.0, and now there is a new version 2.1, 2.1.0, and I like the new feature into the 2.1.0. One of the biggest challenge on any of the enterprise application is that if you want to upgrade not only before upgrading your the main business logic or your code you have to think through the dependencies because you have you have to make sure that your application is up and running all the dependencies all the jar files have a right kind of a dependencies they are compatible right so that is one of the biggest challenge and i think one of the critical area where most of the applications are facing a challenges right with the spring boot 
you are going to solve that problem in the sense that okay you upgrade the spring boot right for example from 1.5.0 to 2.1.0 all the dependencies which are being uh, managed or which are being created by the spring boot are automatically going to be get upgraded to the right version and the other thing which spring boot is going to guarantee you is that okay if you upgrading your spring boot the dependencies which is automatically going to upgrade are working fine they are not creating any conflict and they are well and thoroughly tested so you basically the major work where you are struggling with the infrastructure setting up your project that has been taken care by the spring boot okay so let's look into a little bit more detail so i am going to open our initial project and we are going to get go to a deeper look into what i meant by a parent or the starter parent and how those dependencies are being managed by the spring boot right so i have this one sample application uh, with me what we are going to do is we are going to get a deeper look into some of the things which what we have uh, discussed so far okay so i'm going to quickly open the pom.xml file uh, if you are using a gradle uh, the all the concepts will be same the only thing is the structure it's not going to be the uh, pom.xml file right the other things are going to be remain same so let's see let's let's now pay a close attention to couple of things i have defined here on 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 a high level these four different dependencies right what i'm saying is i need a spring htus i need a spring web then i need a dev tool this is just uh, used for to make sure you are on, working on a dev environment i also need a test to write my unit test cases if you are already paying a close attention there is no version i am defining with any of these starters right i'm just saying this is my group id this is my artifact id I'm never saying, okay, I need a 1.0, I need a 2.0, I need a 3.0 or whatever the version number it is, right? But these are automatically being picked for you, right? So this is one of the fundamental difference when, when you are working on to the Spring Boot application, uh, then as compared to the known Spring Boot application, right? You are not, if you are using any of the Spring Boot starters, mostly you're not going to define any of the dependencies. No, everything will be taken care for you by the spring uh, by the spring boot okay and if you if you look here let's play a close attention here okay so all those things are automatically picked by for you like for example all the spring version right now which is being picked by this uh, spring boot is one dot uh, sorry five dot one dot two uh, the Spring Boot starters and all the configurators are being 2.1.0 and then there are other dependencies but you never define all those dependencies right you never define the versions especially you never define the version which number version you are trying to uh, use for your application everything is being taken care uh, for you by Spring Boot right so the key factor here is this section parent what we are saying is that this pom.xml we are defining that the spring boot starter parent is the parent for this pom.xml and this is the key for all the build system as well as the dependency management uh, when when we are talking about the spring boot the curated list of all the dependencies as well as the plugins and all sort of other things are being managed through this uh, if you use this stack where you define that spring boot starter parent is the parent for those pom.xml right the other thing is you're using a plugin right here you are using this spring boot maven plugin but you are not defining the different uh, the goals or the 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 build goals for your spring boot maven everything you you always say spring boot uh, clean uh, install or something like that you are not define you haven't uh, configured all the other different things for your maven so everything your your dependencies your plugins as well as the list of all the uh, the right dependencies are being managed through this spring boot starter parent okay let's have a closer look uh, to see what exactly happening behind the scene so let's quickly open this spring boot 
startup parent okay so before that let's take a quick look in most of the application maybe when you are finding those application onto the onto the net or internet you may find these properties on more on for most of the spring boot applications until unless you want to override these properties i don't see you really need it and the reason for that one is most of these configurations with the default values are already defined into spring boot starter parent so if you see all the default java version is 1.8 your um, your build source code encoding is utf8 so that's what i'm saying if you really want to use 1.9 probably yes you may want to override this property and saying hey i want to use java 1.9 not 1.8 you don't want utf8 maybe some other encoding yes of course you have to override that property but if you're not doing it i don't think that you may be needing those properties i i it's just adding some extra line but it's not basically doing anything uh, different okay so let's get back to our spring boot starter parent so what i'm saying is if you see all the, there is a plugin management that is happening for you so all the plugins uh, your and then the, their different goals the execution goals are being defined uh, for you by the spring boot right you are not defining anything if you use those plugins rest of the things rest of the configurations are automatically being taken care of by the spring boot the only time you want to override those is when you really want to customize your you are into a situation where uh, these default configurations are not uh, fulfilling your goal those are not fitting into your uh, your test cases right that's the only time you may want to override those one but let's see all these plugins management is being done for you right there are different plugins be, uh, which are being configured by the spring boot as well as their different goals like a packaging repackaging and all those uh, uh, different things okay let's see how the spring boot is managing the list of all the dependencies when i was when we were talking about the curated list of the dependency right let's go one step deeper into this uh, uh hierarchy okay what i'm going to do is for this one i'm going to go to this spring boot if you see this spring boot starter parent is has a spring boot dependency as an parent so let's go there and here we go look at the property file these are the supported third party dependencies with respect to the spring boot 2.1.0 right now i'm using a 2.1.0 so that means if i want to use the spec j which is a 1.9.2 that is the supported and where spring boot says yes this is supported we have tested it that means it's working fine and we can say everything looks good if you are using a apache is common right 3.8.1 is the 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 supported version uh, for the spring boot right so there is a, a whole list of the dependencies those are being created for you being maintained for you and if you that's what i like in the initially in the initial section that's what we said right for example when they release 2.2.0 these dependencies will be updated for you by the spring boot so you don't have to think about it all you have to do is to go to your projects pom.xml file update the version and you are all set to go this is really cool right if if you already have an experience working on the other maven project or sorry other uh, maven based pair projects i think you already understand the pain of uh, hunting down the dependencies making sure that the right dependency is there and here everything is being taken care for you by the spring boot this is this is amazing and if you look into this one there are these are the dependencies right so i was talking about the plugin management which we saw into the spring boot starter parent there is a curated list of the the, uh, the third party dependencies and the spring dependencies those are being managed by here and there are other dependencies which are being managed here right so for example spring boot there are different spring boot uh, uh, starters and other things right so all of all those things the default configurations are here for you all right so i think that will give you an idea 
why we are using this parent here right so whenever you are creating your spring boot application until unless you have really a compelling reasons probably the recommendation is you always want to have this you always want want to extend this uh, in your uh, spring boot project right there are certain use cases where uh, you may not or you are not into a position where you can directly extend this parent for example if you are working on to a enterprise application and they have their own set of the dependency they want that okay all of our applications should have a, a parent as this uh, the main uh, or the core uh, set of the dependency in that case uh, probably you may want to have the parent as your corporate uh, or that um, sort um, your your maybe your customized parent but uh, for rest of the cases the recommendation is you always use this one because it gives you a really a number of different benefits you really don't want to manage your dependencies you really don't want to manage all the plugins let the spring boot handle those for you the last uh, as i said this is not a hard and fast rule uh, for example you are working on some application and where let's say spring boot uh, decided that okay 2.1.0 is the right uh, let's take an example for a better clarity so for example you are working on an application and where you want to use this log 4j right and probably for any reason 2.11.1 is not the right version or it's not a compatible version for what for a v or c reasons right so spring boot is not forcing you to use it it's giving you the recommended list but on your on your pom.xml you can always exclude these uh, dependencies which are being provided by the spring boot and you can always include your own dependencies i'm going to uh, cover that one into a different topic uh, because that's going to uh, add some other discussion into it right i really hope that this is going to give you a better picture in order to start building our spring boot based web application and this was one of the core building block uh, while we are working on our course the next one is the another interesting topic which is going to be the spring boot starters so we are going to talk about what does these means so we are not defining any kind of a specific dependency we are saying okay i just need a spring boot starter web what is happening behind the scene how they knows that all the required dependencies everything should be in place so we are going to discuss that in next lesson